What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you a guide to the Vulture Armor set that was recently added to Divinity Original Sin 2 with the Relics of Rivalon DLC gift bag. So, what is this? Well, obviously it's an armor set, specifically called the Vulture set, and we're going to cover basically the quest and how to actually obtain this armor. Now, unlike the previous video I did about the Captain's armor, this particular armor set does not actually have a ton of lore attached to it, so I don't really have a lot to explain there as opposed to the captains where there was actually a ton of lore uh, that I was able to talk about relatively at length. This particular quest starts technically in Act 1, though that said you don't actually need to do the part in Act 1 and if you miss it you're not going to miss the armor set at all. So if you go into the Magister's Chambers in Fort Joy, uh, the small area where you can find Oravan's mace, it is next to the Judgment area of sorts that Judge Oravan is actually in. So next to that is a small room, and in that room you can find a book. I don't remember the exact title, but it's something about dwarven traditions or something like that. And that book explains that Duna, the god of the dwarves, has an undertaker, and it is a vulture kind of nasty creature that can be summoned with a bit of mutton, a bit of earth essence, and a source orb combined into a particular offering. And that's pretty much all the information we get on it in Act 1. There's honestly nothing else to it to learn in Act 1, and you can't do anything else with this quest until you get to Reaper's Coast. Now, while there isn't any lore attached to this quest really, besides like literally just what I mentioned just now, there is actually a remarkable amount of quest design in this, in my opinion. So you can run across the altar that the book also mentions, where you need to present this offering to summon the Undertaker, as early as level 10. Now, the reason we want to summon the Undertaker, as the book also explains, is that it will give us feathers, which can then be used to craft a particular set of armor. Again, you can encounter this altar as early as level 10, really. Um, I mean, you could probably do it before that, but like, you know, if you're following the level curve around the area, it's level 10. However, if you were to summon the Undertaker right at that level, it is level 15. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, if I have to fight this thing and it's level 15 and I'm level 10, how does that work? Obviously, when you first find the altar, you don't necessarily have to summon it right then. And if you continue playing on in the area, you can actually discover a second part of the book in the Witch's Hut to the north of Driftwood in Act 2. There's literally only one hut up north of the town. It's pretty hard to miss, but here's the map of it anyway. In the witch's house, we can find a second part of the book. The second part of the book explains the specific ritual that you are supposed to use to appease the Undertaker so it does not attack you. And this is where the quest gets really cool. So with all of this information, we obviously still need to make the offering to offer at the altar to then summon the Undertaker. The bit of mutton you can actually buy from the fish vendor in town for some reason. He also has mutton with this update now, so you can just buy that from him outright. It's super cheap. Earth Essence you will drop off the dwarves to the west of Driftwood, which is part of the main quest. You can actually get there relatively easy, and it's kind of where you're directed towards when you first leave Driftwood after first arriving there. But you can actually find a ton of Earth Essence there. And then lastly, the Source Orb. The easy the easiest one I have found to get a hold of is actually in Mortis's house. So Mortis is obviously someone who owns a house in Driftwood. I'm not really going to go into what he's all about. But in his basement, if you access the secret room where the Lich is being held, yes, I realize that's a lot of information, but it is part of a separate quest called The Taste of Freedom. And if you want a guide to that, I recommend you look it up. But in that Lich's room is actually just a source orb on the ground that you can pick up and it's probably the easiest way to get a source orb this early. So once we have all those items, we can then use the crafting menu, of course, to turn them into source infused meat. Now we bring that meat to the altar, which is on the cliffs, again, west of Driftwood. It is marked on your map when you picked up the quest. So if you have the quest, look at your map. It will have a marker where this excavation site is and you can totally find it super easily. Once we bring the source infused meat to this place, we can then of course set it on the altar, which you do have to manually do. Interacting with the altar does not help you here. Manually put the source infused meat on the altar and it summons the undertaker. Here's where it gets fun. If you didn't pick up the second part of the book that I mentioned, you're basically going to have to guess what you need to do, which obviously doesn't 
always work out very well, though technically it is still possible to guess. Now, if you do the right thing, the Undertaker will not attack you, and he will just freely give you blessed vulture feathers, which are then used to craft the armor set. If you do the ritual wrong, the Undertaker attacks you. Now, it is possible to kill the Undertaker. It is only level 15. You will be at least level 15 before you leave this area, and if you want to do that, feel free. However, I don't recommend it, because if you kill the Undertaker, you do not get blessed vulture feathers. You get cursed vulture feathers. You then have to create a cursed armor set, put all of it together on you, and then cast Bless, which will then finally remove the curse permanently, which is more steps to jump through, but it's also not like debilitating either, so I still think it's a fine option if you would rather just kill the Undertaker. There you go. That leaves us with checking out the armor set. This armor set is awesome. So putting all of the pieces on brings it up to level 14, which is basically going to get you through all of Act 2 at least. That said, once you get to Act 3, it is going to start falling off a little bit in usefulness. Now you can tell that with this particular set they had an archer in mind because the legs specifically give uh, huntsmen and range bonuses despite it being a finesse set. That said, it is totally still usable for a rogue. I use it as a rogue myself. I use it on rogues, um, but you know if you have an archer, this is probably the best set to give them specifically. You get a bunch of initiative from this set. Uh, you get several skills actually which i'll go into here in a minute you get immunity to blind and a skill called perforation so perforation adds piercing damage to every attack you do which is really cool we also get from having the full set on an ability called uh, vulture's prayer so if there is a dead body around you in combat you can activate vulture's prayer on that which acts as a bit of a corpse explosion except it heals you and then gives your character a 15 percent damage boost for three turns which is awesome honestly that's a very unique buff and you get it for having all of the armor pieces i think that's really cool so in addition to this having the full set on also gives you wings which is awesome because if you have wings that sets floating status which means you're not affected by uh, ground effects like uh, you know if the ground's on fire that kind of thing that character even if they're standing in it won't be affected by it which is actually great for rangers and their elemental arrows ability synergizes very very well and then we get dust blast which lets you hit enemies around you for uh, earth damage as well as having the potential to blind them if they don't have any magic armor up all around Around. very good set the stats are really solid it should get you through all of act two i will mention one thing that i don't like about this set i don't like the fact that in act one you get a finesse armor set which is the captain's armor set for this uh, dlc gift bag and then in act two the first uh you know, armor set that you can get, the Vulture's armor set here, is also a finesse-based armor set. And lastly, I just want to mention real quick, because I know I haven't mentioned it up to this point, if you're wondering what it takes to craft this after you get the feathers, it's hilariously easy. Any corresponding leather piece, that's what you need. So you need uh, the five Vulture feathers from the Undertaker, and then if you want the chest piece, literally any chest piece, plus one of the vulture feathers, and then ta-da, you have your vulture chest piece. Actual recipe thing is up here, or at least it should be, on the video to show you, but it is super easy to craft. This is not difficult at all. This is super easy armor set. There you go, guys. That's pretty much all the information I have on the vulture armor set. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe. Maybe even check out the captain's armor guide that I made, which had a bit more lore than this one did. But thank you so much for watching either way, and have a fantastic day.